Sometimes it's necessary to design fences which are cantilever wall structures normally used to divide two properties. So this is a property line and it divides uh, the property of two neighbors. These structures can be exposed to wind and seismic forces. The cell weight is really minimum, so the overturning is a concern in these kind of structures. But how do you actually design a fence wall? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design a fence using as deep written. Let's get started. As an example, we're going to design from scratch a masonry fence wall, which is 8 feet high, but only 7 feet are exposed to wind. I have done a quick calculation of the wind pressure, just assuming that this is a zone of 140 miles per hour. This is the basic wind pressure, which includes KD, the directionality factor, 0.85. Then the design wind pressure is equal to the basic pressure times the gust pressure, which is 0.85, and a CF, which is 1.3. All this is according to the wind calculations in ASA 7. So the design pressure that we're going to use in this example is 47 PSF. Let's try to model this in as deep written. When you open as deep written and create a calculation for a cantilever retaining wall, you see this template. Here you can modify all the dimensions and loads and uh, then optimize your design. As you know, the program is intended to be used for retaining wall design. But the, the program is so flexible that it can be used also for uh, fence walls as well. To model this fence, we change the material. Instead of concrete, will be masonry. And then we're going to specify 12 rows of uh, blocks. So the total height is 8 feet. The block thickness is going to be 8 inches, which is the typical block size for this type of structures. As you can see, when we change something in the left pane, we see the changes also reflected graphically in the right pane. We still can see here the default backfill. We need to remove that. We go to the backfill and cover tab. Then the soil cover is going to be one foot in the front of the wall. Then we need to remove all this backfill also to one foot. So backfill height, one foot as well. Of course, we don't need any slope slope is going to be zero and then we have model already our fence wall so we need to uh, optimize the footing as well you go to the footing tab the footing thickness is going to be probably around 12 inches or so we don't need any any shear key for uh, for a fence wall so we can specify the key depth as zero and then we need to optimize the length of the footing in this case, let's start saying that it's going to be probably a 1.5 toe and 1.5 heel. And the fence looks more like this. Of course, we can optimize this further later. For now, let's input the loads. Let's go to the loads tab in the backfill. We don't need any water table, so we need to specify this as zero. We don't have any concentrated load, but we have wind. So let's input here the wind that we calculated previously. We said that it's 47 PSF, and this is according to the SS7, either 10 or 16, which is an ultimate state of uh, wind pressure, 47 PSF. And the wind height is going to be the full exposed height, which is 7 feet. So now we have the, the fence wall and it's exposed to wind. So we need to optimize the dimensions and we need to design the reinforcement. We go back to the geometry tab, in the footing tab. Here we can optimize the design. For that we need to check all the ratios. The overturning ratio is 2.3, which is more than 1.5. So the overturning is very comfortable now, so we can uh, optimize the footing further. Probably instead of 1.5, let's say 1.2 each side so the footing now is shorter and the overturning is 1.7 more than 1.5 we go to the materials tab we, we can check here 
the Fy for the rebars and F prime M for uh, for stem uh, the blocks. We specify the uh, normal weight block in the footing. We're gonna use concrete probably of three ksi and reverse uh, 60 and we can set the allowable bearing pressure for this example say as 2.5 ksf if we go to the other glance tab we can see here a summary of the results we can see here the stability check that we just did so it's acceptable the bearing pressures are okay according to our limit bearing capacity we can see a problem here in the shear forces for the toe it's probably because the bearing pressure at the, at the toe is, is pretty high for, uh, for the factor loads we go to the graph footing tab we can see here the problem the problem is that for the toe design on, on the, the factor loads you know the shear is too high so we need to increase the dimensions of the footing in, instead of 1.2 say 1.4 1.4 the other side and we can see here this configuration of the bearing pressure diagram for the toe design let's go back to uh, to the other glance tab the shear now is okay for the toe if we go to the reinforcement tab at the left here we can enter the rebars that we want to use this is a masonry stem so let's say that we want to use number four for all these fence design we use number fours at 16 we go to add a glance here we can see as we change the sizes of the rebars we can see here the resulting uh, moment ratio right now the moment capacity ratio is 0 0.63 so we can optimize it a little bit probably instead of 16 24 and the ratio is 0.92 it's perfect so it's optimized the stem let's go to the footing and let's use also number fours everywhere and number fours and we can see that the moment capacity for the toe is really low and the moment capacity ratio for the heel is also really low so let's say that we use number four at 12 nominally even if we don't need that much but number four at 12 everywhere and the design is acceptable this way we go to the condensed tab we can see here a more detailed set of calculations if we scroll down to the overturning calculation we can see here all the forces in the overturning side and the resisting side and uh, the overturning safety factor is 2.0 which is more than 1.5 it's, it's acceptable scroll down this is the design of the stem at every tenth of the of the stem height here is the moment capacity and this is the uh, factor moment and this is the ratio which is acceptable it is 0.92 is the maximum graphically we can see that as well if we go to the to the graph tab stem tab at the bottom we can see here the moment diagram along the height of the stem and this is the shear diagram as well the blue area represents the moment capacity and the shear capacity respectively we can see here that the red line is completely inside the blue area which indicates that the design is acceptable as it is go to the footing this is the final design the controlling combinations for toe the controlling combinations for heel if we go to the construction tab we can see here the rebars that we selected for the final design if we click on the detail tab we can see here a more detailed set of calculations step by step with exposed formulas but in pressure calculations here is the stem design with the controlling load combination is the hill design also for the controlling load combination with references to the ACI code the toe design as you can see it's very easy to design a fence wall using as if written even when the program is intended to design retaining walls 
can be used also to design fence walls, modifying some of the loads and the factors. With this, we conclude the presentation in the design of a fence wall using ASDIP written. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.